So it was over on one of our shorts for steps that can improve bile flow that user Sharon something or other says, what's the best diet we should be on to fix this problem? So Sharon is looking for the best diet to improve bile flow. And we all know now that there's a lot of really important factors that can come from bile flowing correctly, and it's very common for someone's bile to become too thick and sticky to flow. The problem is, it's also very important to understand there's never going to be a diet that's going to fix this for everybody. And when you watch our video on what causes poor bile flow and gallbladder sludge, and we'll put the link in the description below this video so you can check that out if you want, but the causes can really be different from person to person. So how could one diet fix the problem for everybody? It's never going to happen. So still, there are some steps that some people can take once they understand what's going wrong for them where food choices can make a big deal. So let's jump into this one. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Now remember, I don't know Sharon, I don't know her situation, so I couldn't possibly be giving her any type of advice. I'm not giving anyone advice on what foods they should be eating because that's going to be different depending on where a person's body chemistry is. But here's an important thing to understand is that when it comes to someone saying, oh, I really want to fix all my health issues with my food choices. I want to make better food choices than fix all my health issues. The reality is that nothing is more powerful than moving towards a real food diet if a person is eating a bunch of junk. If they're just putting garbage and processed junk food in their body, nothing is going to be more powerful than moving away from that junk and eating more real food. And for some folks, nothing can be more powerful than adjusting the amount or type of carbohydrates that they're consuming. And for most people, it'll be reducing those carbohydrates. But for some people, increasing the amount of carbs they're eating can really fix some specific imbalances and problems that someone might be having. But understand this, if a person is having digestive malfunctions like poor bile flow like we're talking about, moving to a more real food diet is not going to fix their problems. How is a food going to fix a problem for a person if they can't break it down and get the nutrients out of that food? And a lot of situations, moving to a more real food diet is going to make some things much worse. I know that sounds ridiculous, but the reality is that a lot of people gravitate towards eating more junk because their digestion is not working well enough to break that real food down. And a lot of this processed junk food is practically broken down in the package, so it's very easy for the body to break it down and turn it into some type of fuel source that it can use, where if somebody puts a steak in their stomach with some vegetables or something, it can sit there for six hours or six days if their digestion is really poor, and they're just going to feel lousy, and they're like, well, I'm not doing that again. I felt horrible. I'm going to go back to eating toaster pastries. I felt better doing that. So a lot of times there's a reason that a person is moving towards this junk, and the reality is that changing your food is powerful if you can digest that food. So for our clients, before we make them make these major changes to the diet they're consuming, we like to help them fix any digestive malfunctions that are restricting their ability to break that food down and get the benefits out of that food. A lot of real food can be more expensive. Why waste all that effort if it's just going to make a person feel worse? So that's an important thing to understand when we're looking at the right foods that are going to improve bile flow. There's a lot of flaws in that strategy if you're trying to improve bile flow by changing to a diet that is more appropriate for bile flow. So let's understand why that is. So one important thing to understand is that consuming more dietary fats has the ability to improve bile flow in a roundabout way because it's cholecystokinin is a hormone that triggers the gallbladder to squirt bile down into the duodenum. So that's what's kind of making that happen. And when the gallbladder is actively squirting that bile down, now the bile is moving. So the movement of this bile is really important in keeping it thin and flowing correctly. The gallbladder's job is to store and to concentrate the bile. So if bile is not flowing correctly, it's not moving out, then whatever's in there is going to continue to be concentrated until it concentrates into sludge or, or even gallstones. So the movement of that bile is very important. Now, 
dietary fats is the thing that triggers that cholecystokinin to tell the gallbladder to squirt this bile down. So consuming more dietary fats has the ability to be beneficial when it comes to bile moving through the system correctly. So if someone's on a low-fat diet, that's a real problem. You're making a mistake. You're causing problems with your digestion because now the gallbladder is being called on less. And remember, it's going to sit there and concentrate more and thicken up and create a lot of trouble. Now, here's the problem with trying to fix poor bile flow by increasing your dietary fat intake. The problem is we need bile to process dietary fats. We can't break down our dietary fats without having enough bile. So a person's going to eat more of this dietary fat, and now they can't digest those fats. Now these undigested fats can become toxic and create a lot of problems for the body. They can make the person feel more nauseous. They can make them feel lousy. They can make them gain weight. It can create skin or acne type issues when the body's trying to push some of these undigested fats out through the pores because the body can't get rid of it fast enough. So a person is usually not going to be able to sustain that long enough to really help the bile start to move better because they're going to feel lousy and they're going to be like, well, I'm not doing this anymore. And they're going to move on to something else. The reality is a person really wants to fix their bile flow before they start to really increase their fats so the body can process the food type that you're bringing into the system. We need that bile to process those fats. So increasing fat intake is a step that I view as very beneficial to bile flow if bile is moving. If it's moving, then increasing your fat intake, good fats, not toxic fats like seed oils and things like that. I'm talking about real food dietary fats, saturated fats. This is what your body is really looking for. You know, olive oil can be okay too, but we're talking about good fats. Increasing fats can help that movement happen more because it's causing that cholecystokinin to tell the gallbladder to squirt bile down there. So I view that as beneficial if bile has movement to it, but if a person's bile is really backed up, I don't view increasing fat intake as a way to fix that problem. It's just going to create more trouble for the person, and they're going to feel worse. So eating foods that trigger the body to tell that gallbladder to squirt the bile down is very important in helping this move, but if somebody has a legitimate cholestasis issue where the bile is really thick and it's not flowing correctly, calling on it is not going to do anything. It's really just probably going to create gallbladder pain or gallbladder attacks and those types of problems. And that's why they tell people with gallstones, oh, go on a low-fat diet because then you won't have those gallbladder attacks because you're not triggering the bile when the reality is now you're just making the whole situation worse because that bile is just going to stay in there and concentrate more and more. Now, when we're looking at other aspects of a diet that can be beneficial for bile flow, protein can be a very big deal because when you consume protein, your body has to make hydrochloric acid to help break those proteins down. And the body will make hydrochloric acid with other foods too, but it might need a little bit more when you're consuming more protein. So the reason this is beneficial is because, remember, cholecystokinin is this hormone that tells the gallbladder to squirt the bile down. Dietary fats trigger that cholecystokinin, but so does stomach acid. Stomach acid leaving the stomach, going into the duodenum, tells the body, oh, it's time to drop this bile down. It also tells the body, oh, it's time to send this bicarb out and enzymes from the pancreas. All those things with the bile help neutralize the acids leaving the stomach and help us really break that food down so that we can get all the nutrients out of that food. So consuming protein that will cause the body to make stomach acid can be very helpful. Here's another trick is that amino acids are the other thing that can trigger cholecystokinin. So it's dietary fats, stomach acid, and amino acids. The problem is amino acids have to be broken down from the protein, and we need stomach acid to be able to break those proteins down into those amino acid building blocks. And a problem with this is that a lot of people are not making enough stomach acid for a wide variety of reasons. A lot of people are turning off their stomach acid on purpose on a daily basis. So if a person increases their protein intake, but they don't have enough stomach acid to break that protein down, well, they're going to feel awful. That's going to sit there like a rock in their stomach, and they're going to feel much worse. So if a person can fix their low stomach acid issues, now they'll be able to acidify that stomach correctly, and those acids will leave and trigger the colon cystokinin to tell the gallbladder to drop that bile down. So all of those things can be beneficial. But again, if a person doesn't have their bile flowing correctly, it's not instantly going to fix that. It takes a lot of effort to take thick bile and thin it out so it will flow correctly. So increase 
increasing stomach acid before you've improved bile flow has the ability to create some major trouble like chronic diarrhea issues because the, now those acids leaving the stomach are not being neutralized by the bile coming down and all those things triggering the pancreas to squirt bicarb out to help neutralize those things. All those things kind of work together. And I'll put some links to some studies in the description below this video if you want to dig deeper into how this whole cholecystokinin thing works a little bit. But when you're increasing stomach acid without fixing these other bile flow issues, you can create those loose stools. You can also create like a duodenal ulcer type issue from all these acids going down in the duodenum and moving towards the small intestine where those tissues are not made to withstand the acid like the stomach is. So when those other factors are not working to help neutralize those acids, that's a big problem. So this is why we don't take our clients and say, oh, adjust your diet like this to fix your digestion. It's just, it's not going to work. It's going to take years to do that and create a lot of problem in the process. So most people are not going to be able to sustain that. We like to cheat and use supplements to help correct these malfunctions. So now a person can digest their food correctly and making these adjustments to the food is really going to benefit them. Now, when we're looking at foods that can thin out the bile, not just things that can call on it to move, but what if we need to thin out that bile? Well, beet greens is one of the things that seems to thin out the bile the most, but a person would have to eat as much beet greens as like a horse, and they're just not going to be able to do that. So again, we like to cheat. We use this supplement called Beet Flow. We're not the manufacturer of this supplement. It's not a commercial for that. This is just what we use for our clients. And it has a lot of concentrated beet greens juice in it. So we're getting a lot more of that effect of those beet greens without having to eat all of these beet greens. So when you can take steps to thin out that bile, that can be beneficial. Some people can use choline to help thin out the bile too. Um, but you really want to know where your body chemistry is because if your bloodstream is leaning a little bit on the alkaline side, choline can really magnify that and create all these oxygen utilization issues and all these problems. So you want to know how to use that. I'll put a link in the description below for our video on who should use choline so you can see if that's right for you. But again, people will say, oh, well, I'm just going to eat foods that are high in choline, like eggs and stuff like that. But you're not getting like a therapeutic dose. You're just getting a food that has more of that nutrient in it. But it's not going to be a high enough dose of that nutrient to thin out the bile the way that supplementing with choline would. Now, some factors with diet and bioflow can be more about what you're avoiding. You know, avoiding grains is very important when it comes to improving bioflow because there are aspects of some grains that have the ability to block that cholecystokinin and now the gallbladder is not being called on and the bile is going to stay in there and continue to concentrate. That can be a big problem. Not using fasting while you're trying to improve bile flow can be very important because fasting, remember, that's, you're not doing anything that's calling on the gallbladder. You're removing anything that would call on the gallbladder so the bile is just going to stay in the gallbladder and continue to concentrate. So we're fans of intermittent fasting. I use that some. We use it with clients when it's appropriate for them, but it's really not right for everybody. I know all the cool kids are doing it. I know you want it to be right, but it's just not right for everybody. We have a lot of videos that show problems that fasting can create, so you can just search for fasting on our videos page, and you'll find lots of problems that that can cause. So for these situations, it's about what you're avoiding that can be more helpful. But again, if a person removes all these grains and processed foods from their diet, but they haven't fixed their digestion yet, they're not going to be able to break those real foods down. They're harder to break down. They're going to feel worse. They're going to magnify symptoms that they're having. So that's why we like to fix the digestion first. Now, if you're new to this channel and you don't know how to do that, I'll put a link in the description below for my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts. Chapters three and four walk you through figuring out which aspects of digestion are not working correctly for you and, and steps you can take to improve those. And you can get that book on Amazon as well. But if you use the link in the description below, you'll get the whole thing totally for free and you can just jump to chapters three and four to figure out how to do that. So I hope that helps. I know that doesn't give you what you want. I know that you want there to be one diet that fixes specific health issues for everybody. Just know that where most issues, there can be three or four different underlying causes. So be smart enough to understand it's never going to happen. There's never going to be a diet for this health issue or this health issue. It can't happen because you have to work with the underlying cause for that individual. 
But once you get bile moving better, you can use all these understandings to adjust your diet in a way that removes your ability to need supplements to help you cheat with. Now that there's movement there, you can use your food choices to really keep things going well. So if you want to understand the steps that we use to thin out that bile so that it can flow correctly, you can jump over right now and check out our video on five steps to improve bile flow. I can't wait to hear about your results.